Today we're talking about environmental policy, because screw getting a ton of clicks. So which of the 95 environmental rules currently being rolled back by this administration are we going to be looking into today? If I were to go over every one of those, the Irishman would be complaining about my runtime. Well, I'm actually going to talk about a policy change that is so tss, hot off the presses it hasn't been added to that regulation list quite yet. That's right, for maybe the first time in this show, we can run the breaking news graphic. Alright, so what just happened? Oh, we're going after the National Environmental Policy Act of 1969 to make it so that federal agencies will have a much easier job in the permitting process for infrastructure projects regarding environmental impacts. So uh, that sounds like a pretty specific policy proposal, although you can probably already guess the arguments on both sides of this one. And ironically enough, they can be summed up by saying the exact same sentence with a different intonation. You can build a lot more environmentally harmful infrastructure a lot faster if you're able to ignore the impacts building those structures will have on the long term viability of the planet. That's either terrible or great depending on your perspective and how badly you don't want to eventually end up dying in a superstorm or fire. The proposed changes to the 50 year old National Environmental Policy Act could sharply reduce obstacles to the Keystone XL oil pipeline and other fossil fuel projects that have been stymied when the courts ruled that the Trump administration did not properly consider climate change when analyzing the environmental effects of the projects. On Thursday, Trump made a speech on this very policy change. In the past, many Americas of America's most Critical infrastructure projects have been tied up and bogged down by an outrageously slow and burdensome federal approval process, and I've been talking about it for a long time, where it takes many, many years to get something built, get something built, done in any way. Uh, the builders are not happy. Nobody's happy. So really, that's the basic idea of what's going on here. Trump's eliminating permitting requirements for public construction projects. It's not that complicated. Knowing this will be more than enough to get you through your next cocktail party conversation. Still, at this point, I'm struggling to figure out exactly how bad or good this is. Luckily for me, the Congressional Research Service recently wrote an essay on it. And I'm sure they were thrilled that, wait, someone actually clicked on this article? I have to call my mom, we got a view! To get a little more specific as to what is happening, three changes are potentially being made. First, you no longer have to factor climate change into your construction permitting reports. Now, This doesn't mean that contractors can just go buck wild and stop reporting any environmental problems with their buildings. You're still required to write more reports than an English major, and they cover all sorts of other environmental concerns. Just no longer climate change. Now that might sound like a random reporting requirement to vote off the island, but in the past these climate change reporting requirements have come up a lot in legal challenges to construction projects. Take for example when construction was temporarily halted on the Keystone Pipeline in 2018. The uh, report issued yesterday by that judge said that there wasn't enough study done on the impact of greenhouse gas emissions, but not only that. It says that it didn't look at the viability of pipeline and using gas in the future. Similar problems emerged when Obama's leasing of an oil field was shot down for not researching its climate change impacts. And Trump's reversal of an Obama coal policy was similarly kneecapped when it came out it did not have the reporting on climate change it needed. Turns out you can just change the rule. Boy, did that take lobbyists quite some time to figure out. Now, The two reasons people are alarmed by this change are that, first, environmentalists are losing a large weapon to fight against pollution projects, and second, if we stop keeping track of the long term emissions impact of these projects, well, that's just information that we no longer have. The second thing this rule change does is streamline the reporting process. The problem? 
The perception that NEPA results in extensive delays and additional costs to the successful delivery of certain federal projects can be magnified when compliance with multiple environmental laws and regulations is required. Or as Trump put it, In the past, those seeking infrastructure permits have had to go to numerous federal departments all over. Numerous, and numerous means many, many. Numerous must have came up today in someone's word of the day calendar. Trump's aim is to fix this reporting requirement by implementing a one federal decision policy. This policy only really affects large government infrastructure projects like highways and bridges. So who knows, maybe sometime soon we'll finally get an infrastructure week instead of weak infrastructure. This policy change is probably the smallest of whoops for the majority of you. But basically, instead of a project manager having to reach out to a ton of different state agencies to conduct similar studies, states would create one consolidated lead agency that would manage the process. Yeah, I don't think anybody's grabbing their pitchforks and marching on Washington with this rule change, but I'm just being thorough here for you guys. The alarming part to some people is that it sets an average time limit of two years for the permitting process. Which leads critics to think that corners may be cut, and projects might move forward with the lead agency before they get the thumbs up from some of the side agencies that would have needed to be reached out to. The last major rule change here is that it would narrow the range of which projects require an environmental assessment at all. And fair warning, I'm pulling some of this next part from Vox, a company that doesn't quite reach the rate of factual reporting I generally use for research. But guess what? Nobody's writing about this policy change. The way the law currently works is all major federal construction projects must undergo a mandatory review or environmental impact statement if they're expected to have a major effect on the surrounding ecosystem. Well, that doesn't exactly sound like a problem that needs solving. This new rule would create a new non-major project category, allowing smaller federal infrastructure projects to begin construction without review. So what's the definition of a non-major project? Well, that's a good question with a not so good answer. Projects that do not have major federal funding or involvement would no longer require assessment. Great, the one group I trust less with construction projects than the federal government, private companies. Unfortunately for environmentalists, the proposed regulation does not set a dollar threshold for what constitutes a large federal footprint, a factor that one official said could also allow major mining, drilling, and other projects to avoid environmental assessments. So a non-major project is a project that doesn't have major input from the federal government. But how much can the government participate? Well, it's pretty vaguely written, so we'll see. So that's Trump's newest environmental policy proposal. If you have an opinion about this, instead of screaming into your pillow tonight, it's actually open to public comment for the next 60 days. Or, well, it took me a few days to write this, so probably 56 days by the time it's getting to you. If you want to let the government know what you think, whether you like this or not, there's a link in the description that should take you to this page. That's right, this video has an audience participation portion to it. As a quick refresher, the three major attributes of this policy change are 1. No longer including climate change in the permitting process. 2. Streamlining the permitting process by having a lead agency and deadlines. And 3. Exempting some projects with limited government involvement from the environmental permitting process altogether. Since this new policy was announced, 70 lawsuits have been filed against it, so that's probably not all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing group of exceptional individuals by clicking the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe because my New Year's resolution is to get to a thousand of you, and I'm so close I can taste it. 898 as of this video. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, 
Thank you for watching.